The year is 1991. Nirvana just released their Naked Baby album. Metallica doesn't yet have a Napster to be mad at. And all the local skating rinks are blasting Mariah Carey, Paula Abdul, and boys to men. You probably think every single movie release from 91 was a box office banger. Until you remember this junk came out too. Don't say I didn't warn you. Words of wisdom. Drop that zero and give it the hero. Hey, brother. Don't knock cool as ice. Those Jamaican guys know how to rock a bobsled, and I think you need to be a little more open-minded. You're thinking of a movie from 1993, you miserable pest. I thought flies only lived a couple of days. Why are you still here? Boy, I'm gonna outlive you by at least five years. You keep hitting them cream cheese sandwiches. Swear to Christ, I'm gonna buy a bug zapper. You can't afford it, poor mouth. Today's movie is Steve Spielberg's Hook, starring Robbie Williams. Meet Peter Panning. He's got kids, but he's also got some kind of uh, generic 90s era corpo job. The point is, Steve Spielberg really wants us to understand that Peter Panning is a shit-tier father. First he fails to support the arts. Then he fails to support the sports. Where is your father? He's missing it. That's it? His biggest sin is that he's not there? My father used to beat me with his empty liquor bottles. Anyway, this guy's such a chicken shit, he's even got some kind of phobia about catastrophic plane crashes. And later in the film, it's heavily implied that Panning is into older women. I, I mean, older women. Hello, Wendy. You were talking some big shit earlier about how all Spielberg movies are about bad father figures. And? And you stole that shit from Slavoj Zizek. Look. You remember uh, uh, the uh, War of the Worlds? The whole problem is Tom Cruise begins as a bad father at the end through helping the children, blah, blah. He turns into a good father. And I think even Jurassic Park 1 has this subtle logic. I think it's that O'Neill, how is it called? The, the... I never claimed it was my theory, you little shit flicker. Zizek may be controversial, but he knows a thing or two about cinema. There's an absent father dynamic in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Dad! Oh, Dad! Oh, Dad! Oh. Tom Cruise plays an absent father in 2005's War of the Worlds. A five card stud, maybe a little blackjack. I'm allergic to peanut butter. <laughs> Since when? Birth. And just two years after Hook, Spielberg would turn Sam Neeland's paleontologist character into a kind of metaphorical absent father for Jurassic Park. Made a bunch of diamond dust, and that changed the weather, and they died because of the weather. And then my teacher told me about this other book by a guy named Backer, and he... She said I should ride with you because it'd be good for you. Yeah, that's Zizek's whole spiel, you filthy plagiarist. The heart of the movie is the absent father. It's almost like the dinosaurs and sharks and shit are really just a vehicle for the daddy issues. That is accurate. If 1993's Carnosaur had an absent father, it might not have been a complete bucket of butt chuff. So what about Jaws? Is the shark supposed to be an absent father? The shark is clearly a metaphor for communism. Now please shut the f up. Yo, I ever told you you look like Canadian Phil Collins from Trailer Park Boys? Peter Panning is such a joyless corporate stiff that his family signs him up for a kind of live action escape room for wealthy shit heels. We're not talking about one of those nickel and dime escape rooms you've seen in the strip malls. Panning's adventure is more like one of those Shaw movies that you sickos are so fond of. 
Brian, speaking of Canadian Phil Callens, this movie's got British Phil Callens. I've forgotten how to fly. Yeah, well, one does. Yeah, the whole idea is to find a way for Panning to become less of a Wall Street prick. Spielberg still had a few sets left over from Goonies, so our theme is pirates. The first puzzle of Panning's escape room involves an attempt to resolve his fear of heights. Fly up there and touch the outstretched fingers of your frightened children, and I'll set them free. All you have to do is touch your fingers and we'll be able to go home. Touch them, Peter, and it's all been just a bad dream. Great. Uh-oh. Looks like it's going to be one of them long escape rooms. The real joy of this film is watching old Dusty Hoffman play Captain Hook with Bob Hodgkins as his sidekick. It's me. Try to stop me. It's me. You better get up off your ass. Get over here. It's me. Remember, this is one of those elite escape rooms. No hoi polloi allowed. Panning's family has budget enough for fancy sets and fancy actors. While Hoffman and Hodgkins rehearse their lines, Panning suffers through the next stage of the escape room. Fat camp! These feral Disney Channel kids teach Panning how to survive on a sensible diet of ham hocks, high sugar fruits, pastries, boutique cheeses, and ultra-processed dessert spread. But they're all on Ozempic, so he's still gonna lose some weight. Maybe you should try that stuff. You look like Wilfred Brimley's out-of-work brother. Yeah, well, maybe you should investigate this lovely plant I bought yesterday. Oh, that's a good one. Hey, did you steal the plant from Zizek, too? Anyway, isn't it time for the ad break? Time to get paid! Today's episode is sponsored by Skidmark Steve's Tactical Flip-Flops. Tactical Flip-Flops? This is the kind of shit our viewers are into? Yeah, I guess they wear them to Walmart in case someone tries to steal their frozen pancakes. Now stick to the spiel, porkins! Constructed from multiple layers of rugged bevlar, Skidmark Steve's tactical flip-flops can fit the needs of any adventure, whether terrestrial, aerial, or aquatic. Bevlar? What the f*** is bevlar? Yo, just think of it as Kevlar's cheaper, less reliable cousin. Each pair of tactical flip-flops contains a compass, a garrote wire, a cyanide capsule in case you get captured by the deep state, and a thumb drive containing all episodes of Band of Brothers. No cap, that show is legit brilliant. Also, I put the cyanide capsule in one of your jugs of Dr. Thunder! At this point, I yearn for death. Anyway, just in case you get wounded or you soil yourself in the line of duty, the inner lining of each flip-flop can be removed and used for other purposes. Why can't we stop shilling this crap? By now, we've got to be getting more views than the Jack Paul brothers, right? You should send a pair of them flip-flops to your mom for her birthday, bro. All she got for Christmas was that coupon to Bennigan's. She likes Bennigan's. Bro, that shit closed down in like 2007. Enough! Let's finish up the goddamn pirate movie. Game on! So, the whole idea here is that Robbie Williams' Peter Panning character has to lose some weight. That way, the escape room's crew can set him up for some wire stunts. It should be noted that Julia Roberts excels at the role of Tinkerbell. Though unless you've been living under a very stupid rock, you probably already know that her presence on set was steeped in controversy. You bite your fat tongue, Barry. She's the sexiest insect in cinematic history. I'm not a bug, I'm a fairy. God damn it! Aw, tough luck, asshole. Meanwhile, Dusty Hoffman here works a separate escape room for Panning's kid. 
The puzzle involves clocks, mostly to underscore the fact that Panning only has a few more hours to escape, or he loses the game. Hoffman's Hook character has a pathological fear of clocks, and the kid here will have to share that secret with Daddy Pan in order to complete the escape. You're letting me blow bubbles with my chocolate milk. <laughs> this scene also reminds us viewers that nothing is more terrifying than the relentless march of time. I mean, just look at how cute I was when I was a kid. Whoa, Nelly! Even my youngins aren't that ugly. Yes, wipe. So anyway, Hoffman tacks on a surrogate dad baseball narrative to the main quest, which, if I'm being honest, is actually kind of cool. He's stealing second! No, no, no! Meanwhile, Peter Panning drops enough LBs that he can finally do wire stunts. And that means it's time to solve the escape room's final puzzle making the legendary Dusty Hoffman disappear. We got him on run! And it's not long before the children of the corn share Hook's greatest weakness with panning, just as planned. Oh. Ah! At first, panning tries to take the diplomatic approach. I want you to take your ship and go. I never want to see your face in Neverland again. Yeah, but the folks who designed the escape room had something more dramatic in mind. Tick. There goes the only character in this film that I actually like. The part with Hook is okay, but the more interesting scene is what happens after the actors all drop their masks, and Panning and his kids return to the far more lavish and fantastic world that they get to inhabit every day. The movie actually leaves us with a fairly dark message. In effect, Panning has succeeded only in trading one Neverland for another. Meanwhile, Bob Hodgkins is out of his escape room costume and back to his second job as a gutter sweeper. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Having trouble with the missus? You will have by the time of you get home. <laughs> we all know the truth, folks. This adventure is tantamount to painting going homeless for the weekend, then claiming that he understands what it's like. Damn, son, you're going hard in the paint today. Painting's like that proverbial tech billionaire who goes to Burning Man for the weekend and won't shut up about how he learned the importance of humility and how the entire universe is one interconnected organism. Bang anyway, Spielberg's hook would go on to spawn an entire movement of films about wealthy dickbag types who have to complete terrifying escape rooms in order to spend a few hours behaving like halfway decent human beings. What does that matter to a bloated millionaire fat cat like you? In other financial news, stock markets rose both domestically and abroad today. I think you're being a little harsh, bro. Who's to say Robbie Williams might not be a better man at the end of the film? You saying it's impossible for people to change? I'm saying bangarang! That's it for Hook, you deadbeats. Go buy some flip-flops. The promo code is DEPRESSION! This long? Yes, I told you that, you f***ing space cadet, and the name is Barry. Now, where did you get the myth? Uh -huh. Lost Boys. Uh-huh. And who gave you the oxy? Jim Hook. Duel to the death. I'll fill you in later. Yes, now listen very carefully. Listen, I'd love to chat, but I gotta climb a drain pipe right now. No, don't climb the drain pipe again. Why would you climb the drain pipe? Why? I ran out of fairy dust. If not, I would have flown up. That's not fairy dust. It's pure amphetamine. Now listen, 
Whatever you do, don't give any of that junk to the old man. It works for me! <laughs>